as I say, it is 7.02, so probably a good time to go ahead and get started. Uh, we'll be looking at Psalm chapter 41 this evening. If you have the material, go ahead and turn your material there. If not, just go ahead and turn your Bibles to Psalm chapter 41. <clears throat> All right, let's begin uh, this evening with a word of prayer. <clears throat> Father God, we are so thankful for this day and the blessings. We're thankful for giving us the opportunity. We're able to work and and eat and spend time with other people. Now we're able to set time aside for studying of your word. We ask, Lord, that you help us to come to an understanding of it. They be uh, repeating thoughts. They may be new thoughts, Lord. However, help us to uh, allow those things to enter into our minds and hearts and, and stay there and, and grow so that we, we may bear fruit. These things we ask in your son's holy name. Amen. <clears throat> All right. Well, yeah, Psalm chapter 41 tonight. Look at my hair. My hair is kind of wild today. I uh, just got back from uh, the gym. So if I see them, if I look a little disheveled, more than usual, there you go. That's why. Um, <clears throat> I, I've mentioned in times before how much I don't like Zoom, uh, but there have been a couple of times where <laughs> it's been kind of convenient, where, you know, you've already made your lesson in PowerPoint beforehand and you can come in, you don't have to shower and you don't. I don't know if you get, one time I came in from cutting grass and I was like, man, I couldn't have been up on the pulpit around people like this is more like gas, you know, but uh, that's kind of one of the benefits of Zoom. There aren't a whole lot. Uh, and I, I, t I tell y'all uh, every time, you know, I wish we were in a Bible class setting so I could ask some questions. Um, what I like about the study of Psalms, uh, we kind of already mentioned a bunch of times, but um, there's just so many universal truths to them. And that's what they are, right? They're little pieces of truths, little golden nuggets of truths. And uh, we ought to be so thankful for them. So the starting um, portion of the psalm is, uh, well, you know, we'll kind of look at an outline here real quick. <clears throat> um, you can kind of see that, that outline right there on screen. It, Keith kind of breaks it up into four portions here. I think he's probably good in doing that. Uh, it says uh, the very first portion, not too different. Uh, from stuff that we've already kind of looked at, the Lord's blessing on those who aid the helpless. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, if you look at the second one, psalmist chastened and oppressed. Uh, we've already kind of seen whoever the psalmist was. The majority of the time is David, but uh, occasionally we've had a few others uh, where the writer feels like they're being oppressed. Um, a lot of times it, the difference is where it comes from. Uh, we've seen people dealing with their own demons before. We've seen people uh, deal with outside circumstances that they can't control. And in this evening, uh, we're going to look at uh, here in Psalm, and it also goes over to the New Testament. Uh, the reason that the psalmist feels oppressed is because of uh, other people, outside forces. So um, that might be a little bit different for us. Uh, a common theme is that third point there, God's deliverance of the upright. Uh, one of my favorite verses, and because it's so convicting, in, um, you know, in Ecclesiastes, and I forget the verses right now, but it's quoted by, you know, he says, God has made man upright, but we have sought out many schemes. Uh, God has made us upright, and if you stay the way that he has made you, uh, you will receive deliverance from, you know, go back to that second point, those people who are oppressing you. And then obviously that very last one, and this is the, the one that is, you know, one of the universal truths that I've already mentioned before that you need to hold on to is God, blessing God for his righteous character. So we'll look at these things as we look into Psalm chapter, <coughs> excuse me, Psalm chapter uh, 41. If you want to go ahead and turn your Bibles there. Let's, uh, let's read verses one and three. Okay. Psalm chapter 41 verses one and three. How blessed is he who considers the helpless. The Lord will deliver him on the day of trouble. The Lord will protect him and keep him alive. He shall be called blessed upon the earth and do not give him over to the desire of his enemies. The Lord will sustain him upon his sickbed. In his illness, you restore him to health. All right. So there, that very first point that I've highlighted, uh, God's blessing on those who, who are trying to aid the helpless. So uh, if you're looking at your material, I believe uh, Keith uses the new American standard version, if I'm not mistaken. And um, a couple of the words that are good for us to kind of dissect. It says in verse 1, how blessed is he who considers the helpless. So in this sense, we, we can gather the way the world thinks, right? 
uh, the world appreciates people who are sympathetic, right? When they see somebody in a poor situation, when they see something sad, uh, when those commercials come on in the middle of the night of, of the sad puppy dogs and they're asking you to adopt one or send money to a, to a shelter or something like that, you know, and they've got the music and the production, you know what I'm talking about. The world appreciates when somebody can be sympathetic towards those, uh, that kind of thing. And then in a very real sense, right? There are some people in this world who, uh, especially in our country, who uh, feel a sense of, um, I don't know what you call it, high, uh, moral virtue. They, they feel like they're better maybe than some other people because they look at maybe refugees, they maybe look at immigrants and they say, oh, you know, we need to help them out and we need to, uh, uh, can, you know, look out for their needs. And that's good. Don't, don't misunderstand me. Um, the word here in, in the psalm is the word consider. I believe it goes further than just, you know, the, the thought of the afterthought or it's a passing thought of, okay, these people are in a poor situation. Um, you know, how, I, I feel sorry for them. So it's not just uh, just the idea of being sympathetic, but probably more empathetic to the point that you're doing something about it. Blessed is he who does something for the poor. I believe that's kind of the idea what's being said there. Um, what, what good would it do somebody to only, you know, uh, pity somebody who's in a poor situation. And, and when I say poor situation, I don't mean just monetarily, but uh, I, I think that's what it's getting at. But I just mean somebody who's in a bad situation. What what good does it do us to just pity them without actually doing any work um, or doing anything about it, right? That's That does us no good to do those things. We're doing no good in doing those things. So the psalmist here says, if you look back at verse uh, <clears throat> verse 1, it says, blessed is he, the word blessed, we, we've talked about that before, blessings from God, uh, living a blessed life as opposed to a cursed evil life. Those are all kinds of uh, good ideas um, because he considers the the, the poor. Uh, if you look at what it says on screen there in James chapter 1 verse 27, <clears throat> pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this, to visit orphans and widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted from the world. You know, that's, that's part of it, right? visiting orphans and widows. And I think part of the example there is just anyone who's in need. Um, certainly in, in the time that was associated with their time, right, in the first century, you would have had, you know, much more widespread, widespread poverty than we do now. And that's not me just saying that. Um, doing enough study will show you that. I mean, just the, uh, the widespread poverty in that time would have been so much more magnified than it is today. So you would have had a lot more widows needing and you would have had uh, more orphans who were in need, right? In this country, luckily we have we have programs for those kinds of people and maybe they're not covered to everyone's liking, but there's still uh, much more opportunity than there used to be. Still, that does not exempt you and I from uh, doing our Christian duty and looking out for people who have less. And are not just only who have less, excuse me, let me correct my wording, but are actually in need. Um, Sometimes I say things like that, have less, and I don't want us to get the idea that we need to have a lot, right? You know, sometimes having less might be a good thing, So, um, but who are really in need. Um, so blessed is the man who does this. So continue on. I spend a lot of time talking about that. Um, it just talks about the kind of blessings, things that we've already read before in Psalms uh, that, that this individual would receive from, from God. Um, once again, the word Lord is, is capitalized. So we've talked about that, right? Adonai, how important that is. Uh, the Lord, it's, it's there three times in those three verses. will protect him, verse two, protect him and keep him alive. He shall be called blessed upon the earth and they will give him, uh, and do not give him over to the desire of his enemies. So that verse is important, that ending part, because it kind of connects to the next thought. Um, he would not be turned over to the desire of his enemies. Okay, what, what would your enemy desire? Well, obviously your downfall. Uh, God God's obviously protecting you. He's uh, upholding you because you were trying to do that for others. Um, this idea of enemies is going to come back up in just the next verse here too. And then verse three, just one more time. The Lord will sustain him upon his sickbed. In his illness, you restore him to health. So it's just talking about um, blessings, things that you normally associate from God. Um, and, and that's because you're trying to live a righteous life, and part of that righteous life is helping others. So one of the things that the psalmist was really afraid about was, was considering his, his relationship with his enemies. 
And that kind of gets us to our next point. You can look there on screen. That second point, the psalmist is chastened and oppressed. Well, by whom? Somebody coming in. Um, by whom? Well, it's by, by his enemies. So why don't we look at verses uh, four through nine? Well, it's kind of a bigger piece of text there. Uh, follow along with me. Uh, Psalm 41, verses four through nine. <clears throat> Okay. As for me, I said, O Lord, be gracious to me. Hear my soul, for I've sinned against you. So that's, I'm going to stop right there and just kind of explain. This is something that we've kind of seen before, right? Where before he gets to his point, there's an admonition of sin, right? Uh, of An admitted, excuse me, of sin. Um, uh, making sure that it's out there. Like, Lord, I understand my position. Um, I'm a sinner but I've tried to live righteously. And then he, he brings a, a, obviously his complaint, right? So continue reading on verse five. My enemies speak evil against me. When will he die and his name perish? And when he comes to see me, he speaks falsehood. His heart gathers wickedness to itself. He goes outside and he tells it. <laughs> Excuse me. All who hate me whisper together against me. Against me, they devise my hurt, saying, A wicked thing is poured about upon him. When he lies down, he will not rise up again. Even my close friend whom I trusted, who I who ate my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. One second, we just got a, somebody coming in here. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So in verse 2, he mentions about not being turned over to the desire of his enemies. The desire of the enemies being his, you know, his his downfall. All right, so he opens up with, Lord, here, here's, here's what's going on with me. I'm a sinner. I recognize that. Right? Once again, right, that's, that's familiar to us, this kind of the way he speaks. Um, but he's talking about now his enemies in verse 5. They speak evil against me. And some of the things they say is like, when will he die? When will his name perish? So if you think back into the life of David, okay, so just do, the, do, the, do this exercise with me. We're looking back into the life of David, um, there were times where as he was king or going to be king, you know, even dealing with Saul, he, he dealt with people who were after him. You know, he couldn't even become king for the first while while he was king, right? Uh, that's because Saul would not uh, relinquish his power. Uh, and while he was a king, you know, it's, it's very infamous that, uh, you know, somebody come in, uh, very infamous that um, later on in his, um, while he was reigning, his son Absalom, you know, uh, attempted a coup uh, of his kingdom, right? He tried to overthrow his own father, and that's that's really sad. Uh, this this was not, uh, you know, this was not foreign to David. Uh, one of my favorite passages, I think it teaches a lot about patience and restraint, is when uh, David is basically running from Absalom, and he encounters a man who's really angry with him because he was from Saul's family, and so he kind of took the the the, the crown away from. Saul and so he's angry about that and he's so angry with him and he's just speaking falsehood he wants all these bad things to happen to David he basically in in our, in our language he curses him out you know and this is how David feels right he feels like people who uh um who do not like him have it out for him it's not that they just don't like him but they have it out for him um I don't know if you've ever been in that situation where you felt like that uh, certainly, I'm sure all of us have uh, felt at one point or another, this person doesn't really like me. I, I can gather that, right? The way we interact, the way we speak, or maybe the lack of it. I can just kind of tell this person and I, we don't like each other. The difference in that is, is like where David here is speaking, it's not just that, but they're out for him. Uh, they, they are hoping for his demise. So um, continue reading on. Look at what it says, verse 6. Uh when he comes to see me, he speaks falsehood. His heart gathers wickedness to himself. He goes outside and he tells it. And he tells other people, right? So it's this person who's going out and he's lying and, and, and trying to spread rumors, trying to spread any sort of falsehood he can to make sure that David is the one who's hurt. Uh, or whoever it is, make sure that they're hurt. Um, look at what it says in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 28. It's there on screen. It says a dishonest man spreads strife and a whisper separates close friends. Um, Ed did a really good job on uh, Sunday talking about gossip, 
uh, not just about gossip, but just controlling our tongue in general. But uh, a lot of it has to do with gossip, right? It's easy to gossip. A lot of times, I think it's one of those things that you, if you don't if you don't tell yourself not to, it's easy to catch yourself doing it. Um, I, I guess the reason I say that is like you know there are some sins that are much easier than others to catch yourself, you know, or to. Uh, you, no one accidentally commits adultery, right? I mean, that's, but sometimes you can uh, just be talking and realizing, oh, I've, I've said something I shouldn't have. Uh, I, I believe this is more than just an ignorance kind of thing. Uh, once again, I'm kind of repeating myself. Th- this is a, you know, an honest attempt to, to bring down um, the person who's writing this. Um, and I, I guess part of the application to what we're reading is uh, th- this is something that you and I could run into. Uh, Ed used the analogy on Sunday, you know, about, you know, tearing up a pillow, a feather pillow, and then telling somebody, okay, go retrieve all the feathers. Well, you can't really do that. When I was a kid, uh, they taught us a similar analogy. It was like, um, you know, get get a, a tube of toothpaste, you know, squirt out all the toothpaste. Okay, now that you've squirted out all the toothpaste, try to put the toothpaste back in. Well, once again, that the, what they were trying to, you know, show with that is, you know, the things you say, uh, the things you tell other people. Once it's out there, you, you, it's so hard. It's almost impossible, if not impossible, to get it back in to correct everything. So um, this is this is the attack on David. So as Christians, uh, this is your second, I guess, lesson uh, this week on, on learning to control the things you say. Because uh, it is easy at, at, at times, if you don't like someone, uh, to to say something about them, to whisper something about them, to be backbite them in some way, hoping for them to be hurt by it, or hoping that somebody, um, you know, you're trying to bring someone into your camp, right? So if you look at what it says in uh, verse uh, seven, he says, you know, he goes out and he tells it, and then he says, uh, all who hate me whisper together. You know, he goes out and he tries to find other people to think like him. Let's talk about how bad David is. Let's talk about how bad you are. Uh, or somebody else's, never be guilty of that. Uh, I'll always watch the things you say. And the, that's obviously the uh, the lesson there. Okay, jump down to verse nine, because this is the part, this is the point I have on screen. It says, uh, even my close friend who I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. If you turn your Bibles and you go to John 13, you don't have to turn there. If you've got your material, it's on there. Uh, this is important because what we try to do in the psalm class is, okay, when does when does the verses in Psalms, when did they somehow connect to the New Testament? Well, there's lots of different ways, but specifically with the things that Christ says in, in John chapter 13, as he is washing the disciples' feet, he has that discussion with Peter, almost an argument, right, where Peter doesn't want to be washed, uh, his feet to be washed, but then he comes to the understanding, okay, Lord, wash all of me. Well, um, as he's talking to them, he, he mentions to them about, you know, the camaraderie that they, he has with them. And one of the things he says to them is, is this, this verse right here of somebody who would betray him. So, <laughs> excuse me, guys. Uh, what's really important here is <clears throat> that we do not ag- neglect that Jesus felt like every other human, right? Um, that he had people in his life who were after him. Um, when we consider the Lord's Supper, it, it'd be good for us to use the word betrayal in our lessons, because that's something that's that hits hard, hits home, um, because that's how Jesus felt. The things that we're reading right here, verses four through nine, it's it's how Jesus felt, right? That somebody was betraying him, one who he might have considered as a friend, um, ha- has changed his heart against him, and that hurts. That hits home, and uh, so um, you know this is how the New Testament connects here to verse. Uh, verse nine in the Psalms. Um, I don't know if it's a direct prophecy. I think, I think part of it is because Jesus will say in that text, you know, so that the scripture may be fulfilled, but I think this was happening. It wasn't just a prophecy saying this is going to happen in years to come, but it was rather something that was also happening to David. Okay. All right. Third point, the Lord's deliverance of the upright. Uh, Let's read what it says. Verses 10 through 12. Psalm 41, 10 through 12. But you, O Lord, be gracious to me, raise me up again, that I may repay them. By this I know that you are pleased with me, because the because my enemy does not sh- uh, shout in triumph over me. 
As for me, you uphold me in my integrity and you set me in your presence forever. So this individual is looking for a, a decent amount of <clears throat> help from God. And when I say decent amount of help, I, I kind of say that just sarcastically. He's asking God for the help. He knows he needs him. Uh, this idea of the upright being delivered by God is not foreign to the Psalms. This is a, a common idea that we see in Psalm time and time again. Uh, there on screen, you have from Psalm 84, it says, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Christian, it is so important. These are these are universal truths, all right? doesn't matter if it's in the old, it's just, it's a universal truth that we walk uprightly. It's It's the way that we have a relationship with God. Um, it is so easy for us. I think if you go back to the earlier verses, four through nine, it's so easy for us to not walk uprightly. You could read that passage and you can think, okay, that's just an evil person. But no, it's so easy for us to be falling into the same temptations and then eventually into the same sins as the ones that we just read about. Uh, the person who's going to have ultimately help in life, the kind that really matters, is the person who's trying to live a righteous life. Um, this is probably the biggest, one of the biggest applications for this, for this chapter is look, you just need to walk upright. And the point that I always say is like, this is how God designed us. We can be the way that God designed us if we choose to be. Uh, it takes discipline that eventually lives, leads to self-sacrifice, but it's, uh, it's not, it's not out of our realm, right? There, there are some things that are out of our realm, um, <laughs> Today, I was supposed to do some sort of exercise and therapy, uh, something I was supposed to bend my right leg and, and hold my body weight. And I tried to do one, and my, I fell straight on my backside. And I told them, I said, I cannot do this right now. I'm, my leg is not strong enough. Um, but we, we, we cannot say those things when it comes to walking a righteous life, okay? It is entirely possible. The world may try to tell you differently, but it is within your strength, it is within your effort that you are able to walk uprightly. And uh, the promise is there that God delivers us for it. And then you get to Psalm um, 41, verse 13. He says, Blessed the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. Um, the verse there on screen is from Psalm chapter 90, verse 2. Before the mountains were brought forth, Wherever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Uh, Keith kind of brings out in the material, this this, uh, this is kind of new to us as we're studying the Psalms, that uh, phraseology of everlasting to everlasting, how it kind of changes now to um, eternal in the New Testament. It basically means something without end, and that's, that's what God is. Not only is he without end, he is infinite, but the promises that he gives are never you know, th those things never go away, right? Uh, they don't have an expiration date. They don't have a due date. Um, the promises of you walk uprightly and I'll stretch my hand out and I'll hold you, that, that's forever. And so not only are his, are, is he eternal, but so are his promises. So a couple of things you want to take away from the Psalm chapter 41. <clears throat> okay, look, before going to God and uh, asking him for help is remember to admit your own faults. Make sure you recognize your station in life, that you need help both physically and spiritually. Do not fall in the same temptation as the enemies of the psalmist here. Do not be a backbiter. This is your second time this week, as I mentioned. So that means, it, you know, and it just lined up that way. So that means that, you know, maybe God really wants you to hear that this week. Do not be the kind of person who's a backbiter, who's a gossiper. We saw how horrible that was, how horrible it made the psalmist feel, how horrible it would have made Jesus feel, that somebody would go behind their back and, and, and say things or do things in attempt to hurt you, somebody else. Do not fall into that mistake or temptation. And then finally, is you know this kind of last point here is just recognizing God's truths and his promises for people who try to live a righteous life. This, in a lot of ways, is, is a psalm that encompasses all of the psalms that we've already studied about. Uh, but these are universal truths that you need to hold on to week after week, day after day. Because, guys, they, they, these things are never going to change. Hold on very tightly to them. And better than anything, put them into practice. Any questions or comments, guys? <clears throat> Let 
All right. Thank you for your fine attention this evening. I think we'll end here. Lord willing, I will see most of you on Sunday. And if I don't see you on Sunday, I hope you have a good week. Okay. Um, make sure to be, be prayerful for people who are sick. There are a lot of people who are suffering with uh, uh, recuperations, um, with the loss of loved ones. There's a lot going on, guys. Go to the prayer list and, and, and make sure to mention those things at night before you go to bed. All right. Lord willing, I'll see you guys on Sunday. Have a good week.